is going to be is going to be uh, coming after I do, and she's going to have a, a, a presentation on a similar topic. So I'm going to try not to overlap with what Elise uh, is going to talk about. But what I'm going to discuss is how you can use artificial intelligence in general and ChatGPT in particular in helping you in your job search. And in fact, this title, Boomers and Bots, was actually suggested by ChatGPT. I went to ChatGPT and I said, give me 10 possible topics on um, uh, titles for a presentation about the use of artificial intelligence uh, to help 50, above, uh, 50 plus people look for jobs. And it gave me 10 and I just picked one. So ChatGPT, the best way to think about it is as a, as a tool to help you in your job search. And uh, you have to understand what it is and what its limitations are. All right. All right. So start out with the question, what is ChatGPT? We hear a lot in the media about artificial intelligence and all the terrors of AI and what how wonderful it's going to be and how terrible it's going to be. And the answer is the answer is yes, it will be both wonderful and terrible. So the best way to think about AI and ChatGPT right now. Excuse me, Mark. Yes. If I could interrupt you for a second. I'm just seeing your little slide up in the corner. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Is everybody else seeing the whole slide? Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> so you should be seeing the whole slide and me in the corner. Yep. Thank you. Me, me in the corner <laughs> right here. Okay. All right. Um, do you remember Clippy? This was uh, Microsoft's little uh, tool to help you. In, in It says, I see that you're writing a resume. Would you like some help with that? I see that you're you know, writing a, a resignation letter. Would you like help with that? I, he, I see that you're breaking up with your girlfriend. Would you like help with that? What Clippy was, was a form of what's called predictive AI. And what it does is it uses large language models to try to figure out what it is that you are writing and try to help you to write that. So we think about this as a form of completion of a sentence or completion of an idea. Well, ChatGPT takes that model and just expands it. And so instead of just helping you to write a sentence or a paragraph, it can help you write an entire article, an essay, things like that. The way ChatGPT works is it, it grabs a bunch of data that it models. So it grabs massive databases of things that it finds on the internet or that it's been trained on, and it learns what writing looks like, how sentence structure works, and then fundamental data. It learns how to mimic that language. So it only knows what it has been trained on. And think about it as an advanced form of sentence completion. All right. So what can you do with ChatGPT that will help you in your job search? The first one is, you know, it's like, what can you find on Google? It depends on what you're looking for. Uh, if you're looking for uh, ideas for, for jobs, ChatGPT can help. If you're looking for employment opportunities, ChatGPT can help. If you're looking to help write or punch up your resume, you can use that. Draft cover letters, write articles, punch up your online presence. All of that are things that you can do with ChatGPT if you proceed with caution, right? Now, we talk about ChatGPT as a standalone model for, uh, for AI. And ChatGPT is probably the most prominent uh, of the predictive AI models. But we are now seeing predictive AI being built into a lot of other different products. And one of the things that Dr. Barnes will talk about, at least will talk about, is the use of AI in LinkedIn. LinkedIn now has a, an artificial intelligence model built into it. So when you log into LinkedIn and you want to post something, um, it will say, would you like help writing an article? And LinkedIn will actually help you write an article. In Google Docs, which is the Google equivalent of Microsoft Word, they now have a feature called Help Me Write. And not only will that help you write an article or a letter or whatever you're trying to write, but I find it useful when once you have written something, you can actually say, make this shorter. Make this more concise. Make this point clearer. Expand on this. 
So you can write something initially and then use this to help decide, have you used the right grammar? Have you used the right syntax? Is, you, is it strong enough? That kind of stuff. In Google search, Google search has now added a feature which you can add, which will allow you to, when you do a search, right now when you do a search, uh, you will get results. The first results you'll get, which are going to be prioritized, are going to be Google-sponsored ads. So let's assume that you wanted to buy a new refrigerator. And you said side-by-side uh, -side refrigerators that are counter-depth. You can tell I'm building a house and need to buy a new refrigerator. Uh, that are counter-depth and with aluminum. With aluminum uh, and it will send you links to web pages that either have articles about it or that are sponsored by manufacturers. Now with, with an AI program, the first result you're gonna see is going to look like a discussion assimilated from all of these searches about, I see you're looking to, to buy a refrigerator. Here are some 20 things you should think about when buying a refrigerator. And Bing has the same thing built into its search results. So AI is now being integrated into lots of other products other than ChatGPT. So one of the things you want to be able to do, and this is a, a lot of what, what Elise will be talking about, is one of the purposes when you're looking for a search, most people look at a, a job search of going to a website, typing in a job description, finding a job, sending your resume, and you're done. <clears throat> maybe writing a cover letter, maybe not. But increasingly, people are not just hiring your resume. They're hiring you as a person which means they're looking at your online uh, persona, looking at articles you've written, looking at uh, your, your online social media presence. So when I'm looking at people, I get a friend request or I get an email from somebody I don't know. One of the first thing I do is I look them up online. I'll look them up on LinkedIn. I'll also look them up on Google. I get a sense of who they are and how involved they are in the relevant community. So if you are a non, you, you position yourself as a nonprofit person involved in the area of sustainable growth, I wanna know, are you a thought leader in the area? Have you Are you linked with other thought leaders in the area? So one of the things that you can do is you can use ChatGPT to help you write articles about thought leadership, all right? in this area. So if you uh, are involved in pharmaceuticals and you want to write an article about, say, um, uh, the what the Ozempic shortage means for pharmacy benefit man, uh, managers or whatever, uh, you can have ChatGPT help you write an article and it will research it and write it at the same time. But remember that at the end of the day, this has to be your article with your thoughts. And I'll go through some strategies on how to wrangle ChatGPT into doing what you want it to do. So first thing is, how do you get ChatGPT? There's two versions of ChatGPT, as you can see right up here, ChatGPT 3.5, ChatGPT 4. ChatGPT 3.5, and these numbers are all going to change as it, as it evolves, uh, is the free online version. Uh, the ChatGPT4 is the one that you have to pay for. It is more advanced, been trained on more data. It is more up to date and it's a little bit more sophisticated. But for your purposes, either one will work. Uh, so you log into chat.openai.com. OpenAI is the company that owns ChatGPT and runs it. Um, <clears throat> and you create an account. And you get this little bar right here that says, send a message. That's it. That's all you have. Just like the Google search bar, all you end up with is this little bar. Once you once you log in, you say, start, start a training session, start a message, and this is what you get. So what you do is you... Um, you ask ChatGPT. I, I like to tell people ChatGPT, the first word in it is chat. So you have to treat this as a conversation. So it's not going to understand quite what you want when you, when you start out. So it is an iterative process. 
you're going to write a question. You're going to write a, a command, tell it what you wanted to do. And it is OpenAI, the company OpenAI is located in the US. Um, tell it what you want it to do and uh, it will generate something for you. That will be useful and helpful, but not quite the end product that you want. So let me give you an example. Let's assume that you are looking for a job. You are a software developer, but you want to change fields, but you want to use the skills that you have in some new area. So you can go to ChatGPT and you can say, uh, I am a former software developer with 20 years experience in JavaScript. I'm looking for a new job in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, uh, or I'm looking for a new job in Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, in But I, I want to use these skills, but I want to work in a nonprofit arena. What are some good ideas? Some job descriptions. And it will come up with content. So what I wrote here is, for example, what are the best jobs in Washington, D.C. area for a former lawyer? And it just came out. And this is just a partial list of some of the job descriptions I might want to look or places I might want to look for jobs. Then I can go on and I can say, OK, within the federal agencies, what federal agencies are good for people with the following skills? And it will, it will tell you, say, OK, great. Now that I have that. Uh, what are some um, good job titles or job descriptions? And then it'll say that. So you have a conversation with ChatGPT. You don't just look at it uh, and um, um, you don't just look at it and say, okay, this is the answer. It's not, the difference between ChatGPT and Google is Google looks for something that already exists. Chat takes what already exists and creates something new from that. So it is more uh, responsive to your specific request. But ChatGPT, usually the, the, um, the search models end about 18 months ago. So if you're looking for something that happened recently, you won't find it on ChatGPT. If you're looking for it, it also does not go out to the web and find what you're looking for. What it will do is it will take whatever it has been trained on and assimilate a, a result from that. So it is an iterative process. The, the key part about ChatGPT is coming up with the best prompts and then responding from that prompt. And the other thing is to note that if you were, if I were to ask you to write a cover letter, you would write it fundamentally differently from the way ChatGPT would. So a lot of what you're going to do is um, train ChatGPT through a series of questions and responses to respond, get it closer to what you would want it to be. Then take those results and use them as a template to write what you want to write. So one of the useful things is you, let, let me give you an example of one way that you can use ChatGPT. Let's say that you have found a potential job description as a, um, uh, let's say, as a fundraiser for a nonprofit entity that's involved in animal rights. So the first thing you say is, okay, uh, what are some job descriptions for uh, a, a fundraiser for a nonprofit that does animal rights in the DC area. So now you go out online and you look for fundraiser. You find this wonderful job working for PETA or working for the Animal Rescue League or whatever, and they're looking for fundraisers. Great. Now you're going to take that job description, which will be three or four paragraphs, and you're going to put it into ChatGPT. Simply cut it and paste it. And you're going to say, write a cover letter for this job. And it will generate a cover letter that will be absolutely terrible for that job. But what it will do is it will, and it's going to be completely generic and it's not going to be anything about you. So it'll generate a, 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 a cover letter. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your resume or key parts of your resume 
And you're going to cut that and paste that back into ChatGPT and say, write the same cover letter, but using my resume. Okay. Now it will generate a new cover letter, which will say, dear, uh, whatever, um, you know, uh, as you, I'm applying for the job of fundraiser, uh, as you can see from my resume, I do blah, 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 blah. Uh, and now, now you'll go back and say, that was great, but highlight the skills in my resume against the requirements of the job. And now we'll, we'll do, it will do that. And it'll generate a decent template. And then you'll go back and say, okay, great. But this time what I want you to do is highlight the work that I did for ABC company and show how those skills are relevant to the job description. And it will generate it again. Then you'll look at it and you say, this is too long. Generate the same thing, only half the length. And it'll do it again. Then you'll say, okay, this is pretty good, but make it friendlier. Then it'll do it again. And it'll be too friendly. <laughs> then you'll say, okay, this is good, but make it a little bit more professional and discuss time frame and salary. Okay, then it'll do it again. And this is the whole point about chat GPT being an iterative process. At the end of the day, you've now done 10, 15, 20 prompts to get it to where you want it to be. Now, what you do is you don't use that cover letter. You use that as a template to generate your own cover letter. Or you can cut and paste that cover letter into a Word document and now start editing it and make it your own. Where ChatGPT is also really good is in doing something you have never done before. So I use ChatGPT like um, to, for example, uh, in a as, as a lawyer in a slip and fall case, somebody slipped and fell on somebody's driveway and they're suing. I don't do that kind of stuff. I have no idea how to do it. A friend of mine had this happen to him, said, can you help me? I said, here, chat GPT, write an answer to a slip and fall lawsuit. Boom, here you go. This is good enough. Is it good? I don't know. Is it better than I would have done? Yes. As a lawyer, I can look at that and say what it's missing. I can say also include this, also include that. But it's something I've never done before. I don't even know what it would look like. It will generate something that will look like that. So it is, is uh, whose decision is it for that it's too long, John? All right. So a cover letter should be about two paragraphs, no more than two paragraphs. The first thing to do is to say, and am I bored when I wrote it, write it, read it? Okay, because they're going to get, you want a powerful cover letter. And one of the things you're going to get from a lease and you're going to get in the Career Gateway Program is how to write effective cover letters. What ChatGPT can do is give you a template to start it. It is really helpful in avoiding what's called white page syndrome, where you look at a piece of paper and go, I don't even know how to begin. All right. At the end of the day, the thing that you submit should be your cover letter, not ChatGPT's cover letter. Um, Mark, there's a couple of questions. Sure. Um, one, how does ChatGPT compare to a Google search asking the same question? All right. So you use Google and you use ChatGPT fundamentally differently. And, and one of the things is Google now has AI built into it. So uh, the first response you're going to get on a Google search will be a ChatGPT like response. Google is search, chat GPT is generate. Okay. So Google search will be, I am looking for, uh, okay. I am looking for websites that have things to do in the Washington DC area over the weekend. All right. Great. It will show me the Washington Post's article on things to do over the weekend. It will show me movie theaters and things like that over the weekend. If I go to ChatGPT and I say, what are some great things to do in Washington, D.C. over the weekend in fall? It will generate an article telling me what to do. The problem is it does get its data from the Internet. The problem is it gets it from particular subsets of the internet. It is not scanning the entire internet the way search does. It does not search everything that is indexed on the internet. And so it can't tell me 
what concerts are going on this weekend. It can't tell me what theater is going on this weekend. So one is a useful discussion about uh, article about what are things to do in Washington, D.C. The other one is a search tool. So they work fundamentally differently. Okay. So oh, the so other thing you can do with, yeah, you have more questions? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, the other question is, just to let you know that this um, this PowerPoint presentation is available, will be available on on the um, our expo website. So that is just to let everyone know. Um, while it, someone said, while AI is useful, would the reader question the authenticity of the written passages having truly been crafted by the writer and not AI? The answer to that is maybe. Uh, so as you generate stuff in AI. Employers are very wary of AI generated content as our professors. <laughs> okay. Uh, the good news is right now I can tell the difference between something that's been generated by AI. There are AI generated tools that look for things that are AI generated. And there are AI generated tools that will make something that is AI generated, not look like AI generated. Uh, so at the end of the day, again, it is a tool to help you. But you need to put this stuff in your own words. And then one last question, we'll let you get on. If chat GBT doesn't get its info from the internet, where or who does it collect its data from? Yeah, it does get it from a particular subset of the internet, not from the not from the online active internet as it exists right this minute. Okay, thank you. Okay. And that's one of the big questions about AI is that is AI um, infringing on the copyright on the people who created content and put it on the internet? So if I ask an AI program, uh, uh, write me a, uh, a book chapter in the style of, um, uh, I don't know, I'm looking at my, 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 my book, uh, who wrote Hamilton, uh, the book. Anyway, write me a book <laughs> chapter in his style. Is that infringing on his copyright or, or, or even a trademark? So that's another issue. All right. So what, on ChatGPT, you want to experiment with various questions, okay? Because you're going to get different kinds of questions and different responses. So the more detail that you can provide, and that's why I like the cut and paste approach, the more targeted your answer is going to be. It's one thing to say, write a cover letter for a job with Boeing. It's another thing to say, look at my resume and write a detailed cover letter emphasizing my adaptability or emphasizing my attention to detail, or emphasizing my creativity, all right? You can also put your resume into ChatGPT and say, rewrite this resume focusing on the following. Or you can take a job description, put it in ChatGPT, put your resume in ChatGPT and say, rewrite my resume to for, for this job. We're used to writing a cover letter saying, here is my resume. It is fixed in stone. Here is your job. It says this. See how my resume fits your job? But you can actually rewrite your resume so that it um, it actually uh, focuses on those skills d uh, discussed in the job description. You can also tell it to make it. So one of these, I write a lot of articles. And I use ChatGPT to help me write articles. ChatGPT is a really good way of generating an article, a really bad way of generating a good article. Uh, ChatGPT is like writing a book, asking a fifth grader to write a book report on a book they haven't read. All right. They'll generate content, but it may not be good. But one of the things I always do right before I'm done with it, after I've been playing with it a while and tinkering until it's something close to like it, I'll say, okay, now rewrite this whole article, but make it 20% more sarcastic. And now we're approaching my style. Or add some humor to this. Okay. Or um, make this more authoritative. Or cite specific articles. And this is a little trick. When you're using ChatGPT and you ask it to cite specific articles, tell it to put links into the articles so you can click on those links and see if it's really true. So you can use it as a job search research assistant. 
I'm a 65 old year old legal assistant looking for new jobs that will take advantage of X skill. What's a good job title for that? You can also use it to get unstuck writing. So if you want to write an article about something, if you want to write a posting, things like that, it can help you do that. You, you can continuously tweak it until it gets to be closer to your own voice. You want to, uh, for example, say, I see this job is one for fundraising. What are some other words I can search for in my job search uh, that are similar to this? Because if you look for jobs in fundraising, you may not find ones on development or career development or things like that. So it can give you alternative terms to use uh, to, to do searches. Uh, you can uncover similar jobs in a new industry. So you can say, uh, I've been involved in banking and finance. What are some other industries that I should be looking for? Uh, if you want to change jobs, you can say, these are the skills I have. What are some good jobs that, that utilize those skills? If you can tell it what your priorities are. I'm interested in work-life balance and, and a job in the D.C. or the Montgomery County area. Uh, I want to be able to work from home. What are some jobs I should be looking for? Rather than just doing, you can do it in conjunction with a Google search as well. You can say, what are some companies in the DC area that also do the following kinds of things? Or I'm looking for a small or medium-sized company in DC that does the following things, and it will help you do that as well. Or you can say, <clears throat> you know, give me a list of, uh, I'm applying for a job with X and such company as X and such job title. Give me 50 possible interview questions that might be asked. Or draft five questions I can ask them about X and such company. Um, or what questions should a job applicant ask about ABC company? Or what are the top questions that are asked in an interview of this kind? So you can, you can preview interview questions. Uh, you can predict some of the questions you might be asked. What are some behavioral job interview questions I can expect for the following job? What are typical questions asked? What are some questions I can ask? Um, and then you can type in your answers and say, uh, what would an employer think about these answers? Uh, it's really good for avoiding the blank page syndrome, okay? So let's say you've now done your interview. You want to write a thank you letter. It should come from the heart, not from chat GPT. But you can say, um, the following five things came up in my interview write a thank you letter with a, a discussion of what the next points are going to be and address the following concerns or following issues, okay? Or you can cut and paste your resume in and say, uh, or the job description in and say, write a thank you letter to Mrs. Smith after our, our September 28th interview, thanking her for the opportunity, asking for next steps for the following job, all right? And again, you're gonna have to tweak all of these Okay. And Mark, Liz, I have, oh, about, yes, I have a couple more questions. You want sure. me to, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Um, let's see. Someone said I'm retiring from teaching part-time at a local college. Chat GPT is being heavily debated. Yes. I can tell the difference between human and AI generated papers, but what do you say to, I mean, this is an ongoing debate. So <laughs> it's almost like there are AI wars. <laughs> War between those who use AI and those who seek to detect who are using it. <laughs> yes. yes. You want me to you want to address that and then I have some more questions or go ahead. <laughs> sure. Um, so uh yeah, I mean the, the problem is like I said, the chat GPT is like a fifth grader who has is asked to write an assignment on Moby Dick, you know. Moby Dick is one of Herman Melville's greatest works, and it is a work of a, a great American literature. It discusses the the um, the themes of man against man and man against nature, and the striving against uh, some conflict. Well, I've never read Moby Dick. I've pretended to read Moby Dick many <laughs> times. That's the essay that you would write if you'd never read Moby Dick. That is what ChatGPT will generate. The key here is not to let ChatGPT do the work. It is to allow you to direct ChatGPT to help get there. Uh, at the end of the day, you should have a piece of work that has been assisted by ChatGPT that is your own work. Okay. So if you want, what was the prompt? 
tell ChatGPT to include the links and references, there it is. Include links to all things. Cite at least 20 different uh, 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 professional publications and include links to each one that you cite. That'll work. Um, someone said, said, I'm concerned about the confidential confidentiality of my res information, i.e. resume, some specific questions that chat GPT GBI accesses. What happens to this information? It must be kept and used in some way. Um, the answer is nobody knows. <laughs> chat GPT claims that your individual search requests are your own and they are not shared. However, your resume formatting and modeling and all that stuff goes into the learning process. So imagine if 10 million people put their resumes into chat GPT. It's not like I can search your resume or get any information about your resume from chat GPT or that other people in chat GPT can search it or even the chat GPT can search your resume. But the language model will read your resume and use your formatting language, things like that, to help educate it about what does a resume for engineers look like, and that will help feed the overall model. So ChatGPT uses every prompt, every question, every response, every piece of data put into it to help build its model. Mm -hmm. So are there privacy concerns? Yes. But remember, your resume is probably out on LinkedIn and a bunch of other places as well. ChatGPT is the least of your concerns in that regard, okay? Uh, what was the prompt to tell ChatGPT to include the links to the references or sources uh, um, it used? Is there a prompt you recommend? No, just say include links. Okay. Remember, and you can tell ChatGPT anything. So uh, you can say, write a 500 word article about uh, whether electric cars will replace um, gas powered vehicles, uh, focusing principally on the, the lack of charging stations and discuss 15 different ways that we can overcome this problem. Also cite specific articles from technical journals uh, and the audience here is a technical audience, okay? And then it'll generate something. You say, okay, that's good, but actually make it more technical. And instead of 500 words, do 2,000 words. And it'll do it then. And you'll say, okay, that was pretty good. But instead of doing that, I want you to also discuss the following five things. Okay. Or you can say, generate an outline. How smart is ChatGPT on writing slash rewriting resumes to start with active verbs, part tense for, for forgotten jobs, et cetera? It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. But even if you don't use ChatGPT, there are lots of resume writing tools out there, which you'll learn about in the Career Gateway program and in the Cyber Savvy course. See that? That was seamless. Uh, <laughs> that, will, that will talk about how they use AI to do things like reviewing your resume and helping you write the resume and prompting you for key active words. But you can take your resume, dump it into ChatGPT and say, Read my resume and make some recommendations on how to um, uh, make uh, 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 make this stronger, more active. Blah, blah, blah. The better approach, though, is when writing your resume, rewriting your resume for a specific job. All right. Um, you, Mark, you mentioned that um, there was a ChatGPT site um, earlier in your uh, discussion. OpenAI.ChatGPT. Can you put that in the uh, chat? Sure. Okay, because people are, several people. Or you can simply say on, on Google, where do I find ChatGPT? <laughs> I'm having trouble. Uh, okay, okay. So there you go. There you go. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so we'll let you, let's see. Um, I think that's it. If not, just Google search it. Okay. All right. I want to talk about hallucination, okay? Chat GPT has a word limit of about 800 words. No, I've, I've, I have, um, uh, normally I, I found Chat GPT's word limit to be around 2,500 words. But what you can do is you break up your question into multiple questions. Write me 2,500 words on this, write me 2,500 words on this, write 2,500 words on this, okay? 
and then you can do that. People write books using ChatGPT. Hallucination is the problem with ChatGPT is if I ask it, for example, and I've done this, write me a motion to dismiss a criminal complaint uh, citing law in uh, the Fourth Circuit on the following topic. Cite the specific cases and give me links to the cases. It will do it. It will say, in the case of Jones versus Bones, 107, F3rd, 119, uh, Fourth Circuit, 2013, the court was faced with the following fact pattern, and it ruled, quote, blah, 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 close quote. Brilliant, right on point, just what I need, completely made up. Because remember, chat GPT is clippy on steroids. It's, it, its focus is on generating something that sounds good and looks good. Accuracy is not as important. So it makes stuff up. Recognize that. Unlike Google search, which finds stuff that exists, ChatGPT is trying to make stuff up. So everything on ChatGPT has to be fact-checked. All right. And here is how you reach Jody. Okay. And Jody can reach me. And look at that. Okay. We have some questions. So don't think you're over yet. All um, right. <laughs> I'm going to uh, stop okay. sharing. Okay. Um Okay, and here, let's see. Okay, so if you can, um, okay, so someone someone would like for you to put, tell me, because um, it didn't make it to the site, the, the to get chat GPT, what is the site again, Mark? Um, I, I will tell you in just a second. Here we go. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to share okay. this screen here. Oh, good. Okay. All right, and then we'll just open a browser window here. And it says, um, someone has a question. What does ChatGPT derive from its free service? Is it then used for its paid service and for generating ads? Um, yeah, okay. So anytime somebody gives you something for free uh, and it's useful to you, just remember that you are not the customer. You are the product. So ChatGPT... Let me just go here to this profile and slide over here. Just one second. So chat, G can you all see the chat GPT screen? It's kind of small. It's very small. All right. Well, yeah, just tell me and I'll, I'll put it in the chat. No, no, no I'm not oh. saying that. Can oh. you see the screen here? It's chat.openai.com. Chat.openai.com chat right there. Okay, perfect. I'll put it in right, the chat. So let me give you an example. I'll just show you an example. Write a friendly co cover letter for a resume for uh, a fundraising job with a nonprofit company in the healthcare sector. It's going to do a bad job. And this is how ChatGPT works. It's bland, it's but it will give me a couple of sentences that I can use. And you can see how this would be a much better letter if it knew more about me. But again, this is the book report on, um, on Moby Dick. And it gives me some ideas, like maybe I can make this personal, okay? Uh, maybe I can add, you know, I've, I've been out of the workforce for four years because I've been taking care of uh, my elderly mother or I have a child with, with a, a disease, a specific disease. That's what led me to the healthcare sector, okay? So this would be, this would be a cover letter, all right? And then I can say, same, but 
focus on my uh, degree in nursing and the fact that I have worked in healthcare for 35 years. Also, make it funny. Now, I would never send one uh, that I said make it funny because you're going to see it's going to be funny but inappropriately so. Inappropriate for a cover letter. Again, right. I mean, someone commented, you know, this is more than two paragraphs. Yes, but you guys... This is not to be. You're just not sending in. this as it is. <laughs> yes. You're okay. Just, this is just giving you suggestions, guidance. You're then you to make it your own resume. You're supposed to make it your own cover letter. This is, you're not purely just to use chat GP, you know, to to write your your resume or your cover letters because it it will it, they your an employer will know. So, Same, um, but focus on technical skills. And keep it. Mark, someone it. said that my experience with ChatGPT 4.0 is that it has word limit of about 800 words. Yeah, there no, I already addressed that. Okay, okay, great. Okay. I, uh, I, I find it to be about 2,500 words. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, is, unless there, is there anything, because um, we are coming up on 11 o'clock, and um, Elise will be joining us for her, our next presentation that you, um, and Elise will be talking about how to use ChatGPT in your LinkedIn profile. So this falls from Mark's presentation to Elise. Um, and Elise, uh, Mark, is there anything else that you would like to provide? Um, no, just remember this, this is a tool. It can be used for good, it can be used for bad. <laughs> Recognize that it's just a tool, okay? So I, I'll leave you with this. It's a tool, don't be one. Oh, <laughs> um, and uh, Mark, there, Mark, can you stay in the chat to answer? There's a couple of questions. Someone, um, someone said you didn't finish the discussion why ChatGPT is um, and f is free and what it gains from this. Oh, I, I mean, it. it uh, the reason ChatGPT is free is because they're trying to develop a. Uh, uh, they're going to license ChatGPT into a bunch of other tools, so people will pay for the model. They will pay, you know, they may not pay directly for it, but they're going to pay indirectly for it. So the open AI chat GPT generative model is going to be built into many, many different things. Um, and so they're generating a database of, of questions, answers, responses, and things like that. So they're, they are constantly adding more data to, to chat GPT and more analytics to chat GPT. So it's free for now. It's like everything else. It's free for now until until you get addicted to it. Right. And can ChatGPT GPT generate phishing emails? Oh, I'm sure. Question. It can also generate responses to phishing emails. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me tell you one of the things that we're using ChatGPT for in the in the uh, security arena. <clears throat> Not ChatGPT, but 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 uh, OpenAI. When you want to really find out what the, the bad guys are doing, you have to have conversations with them. And the problem with these conversations is they're one-on-one. -on -one. They're very labor intensive. So we have people who have infiltrated hacker communities and they're on the hacker boards and they're discussing things with hackers all the time. Um, and that's to bring them out and find out what these guys are doing. So we've now written chatbots that will actually engage the threat actors in conversation. And then we don't have to have people sitting there at keyboards typing. The chatbots will have conversations with them. Unfortunately, the bad guys also have their own chatbots, and you've got these two chatbots talking to each other, and there's no humans involved. So this is well, our robot overlords. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, and if you um, just stay in the chat for the next five minutes or so, sure. if there are any questions direct, I've answered, we've, we've gone, you've just start at the um at the at the bottom because i've gone through all the questions um sure. um actually there's a qu question starting um at 1101 from gail you could start down from that um and address them specifically to the individual because elise will be will be asking for questions for elise in the general chat so thank you mark
appreciate it. And Anne, if you would like to introduce I'm Dr. Elise Barnes. Absolutely.